Hello again. Uh, welcome to chapter 11, apply what you know video. Uh, in this, we are going to solve a couple uh, problems. So let's start with the first one. David Berger is the food and beverage director at the private membership Fox Rich Country Club. He is implementing a new dining room menu and has calculated menu prices for the six new entry items the menu will include. So it's basically asking to complete the worksheet and, and uh, answer some of the questions in here. As usual, uh, please stop here and try to solve the problem yourself and you can come back, come back in a few minutes. Now, assuming that uh, you already work on the question, so let's go uh, on the question one by one. Now, actually, let's, let's write it down first. Uh, like, for example, what is the food cost percentage? Food cost percentage. Now, food cost percentage is basically item cost, in this case is the product cost, divided to selling price, okay? So if you follow that, Product cost divided to selling price is going to give food cost percentage. Let's take this pull down all the way. And we can see the different food costs. As you can see, like the most expensive one is the New York Strip, the food cost, all the way to mushroom pasta is 20%. Now, second part is the prime cost. <clears throat> As we talked about the chapter video, or in your chapters, prime cost is basically adding labor cost in the product cost. There are varying labor costs, but in this case, is uh, labor cost is already giving. So product cost. Um, give me a second. Product cost uh, plus labor cost. Okay. Now, so prime cost is going to be equal sign product cost plus labor. You can see how much is the total cost is going to be producing this uh, uh, food items. And the last one is the contribution margin, right? Contribution margin is uh, basically you have a, some kind of uh, selling price and Minus what do you think is the product cost? Product cost, which in the end is going to give you the uh, contribution margin. So, selling price minus product cost. So, basically, this is how much money you are going to make out of these items. Okay, so let's go uh, actually, let's go to the calculate the averages as well. Uh, average could be calculated two different ways. We can add all these numbers, which is the six of them, and divide the six. Or in Excel, we can use average function and divide this, I mean, the calculated automatically. Now, for the food cost percentages, total food cost percentages, we cannot just get the averages. If you get the just the averages, it's going to be wrong. But what we can do is we can get the Product cost average divided to selling price average, then it's going to give us the uh, total uh, food cost percentage. Now, if you go one by one, what is the lowest food cost percentage? If you look at here, is portabella mushroom, right? So, what is the highest one? Is the food cost this one, which is the New York strip? Now, uh, what is the lowest prime cost? Same thing here, portabella mushroom, and the highest prime cost is this New York strip again. Now, if you look at the uh, contribution margin, it's a little bit different. Uh, let me see, what is the lowest one? This one, New York strip. So, which means basically is uh, actually, I'm sorry, roasted free ranch chicken is 1242. Roasted free ranch chicken is the lowest contribution margin. And the highest one is the pork medallions. So if you think about it, you are making more money uh, uh, from uh, pork medallions because of the selling price versus product cost. Now, what will the overall cost? Okay, 
The overall food cost percentage we just calculated 36.91%. And last question says, how crucial do you believe David's many prices are to his potential diners' frequency of visits? Explain your answers. Now, this is a, of course, open-ended question. It can vary, uh, but the idea here is when we talk to the students about the private clubs, they they think that that price doesn't matter, not important because they are rich people and it, it shouldn't matter. But in reality, uh, rich people are not become rich because they like to waste money. In the end, you should still need to provide fair price and also uh, some kind of uh, value to them okay now this is the question for this let's look at the second question Fazia Muhammad is the G general manager and revenue manager of a popular 300 seat uh, family style Italian restaurant open only for dinner nightly she calculates a variety of statistics that help her better understand the revenue generation abilities of her operation Complete the revenue generation recap report she has developed using today's data and the answer the questions that follow. So how many guests, uh, total revenue, check average, table churns, and etc. So once again, please stop the video here, try to solve the problems, and come back. Now, as you can see, <clears throat> this place is open between 5 and 10. I mean, of course, this is a, some uh, scenario uh, it might be might not be true at, at all, but the idea here is for you to learn how to solve the things. The first thing we need to solve is the revenue, right? So how do you calculate the revenue? You calculate how many guests served, and you take the check average, which is going to give you the revenue. Let's pull this down. Okay. Now, the one thing here is missing. We don't know how many guests served, but we know how much is the revenue and what's the check averages. So we can go to basic algebra and do the other way around. So basically we get the revenue, okay, and we divide that to check average. So 315 people. One point I want you to uh, be careful about and remember the term soft constraints, right? You talk about the constraints in the... Uh, hospitality industry, do you remember that, for example, if the rooms, like for example, if you sold out all the rooms, you cannot produce new rooms. So that's called the hard constraints in the hotel industry. But in uh, a restaurant, it's kind of called soft constraints because you can make, make some arrangement. Like for example, this is a 300 seat restaurant, but they added like 15 more seats. So I'm um, like, you know, in the table, they put like one or two seats around so pe more people can sit, just to give you an example. So, uh, totals, let's calculate the totals. We can basically get these. Okay, now, uh, so in this case, they uh, served 1,050 people. Now, table turns, which you should know about, equal. So, how many people you served? So, number of guests served divided to number of seats available okay so if we do that we get the 1050 divided to 300 so table turn is 3.5 which means each seats being uh, people eat get out people eat Get out, people get it out like 3.5 times. So that, that is an important term you should know. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at the check average. We can get the average, oops, average of these. Okay. And um, let me see what we are missing. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's forget that. Do you remember the first problem? I told you that you cannot calculate the check average directly. So exactly we are having the same thing. Let's do this. Let's get the revenue. Sum of all the revenue. So we got $13,577. And we got that revenue divided to how many people we served. Do you remember it was 1244? Now it's 1293. So 
Uh, I just want to show it to you, but also don't make the same mistake. You cannot just get the averages, averages of averages in the, the, this kind of calculations. So let's look at quickly. Um, how many gets did Fawzia saw on this night? 1050. What was Fawzia's total revenue? 13,577. Check average was 1293. Uh, table turns for the night 3.5. What revenue management related challenge does Fawzia have faced from 78? What would you advise her to do about it? Uh, now, hopefully, while you're uh, serving, you thought about this, what's going on. Once again, this is not an easy answer. So I cannot uh, tell you exactly this is the right answer. But if you look at the 7 to 8, you can realize that there is a lot of demand. As a matter of fact, so much, they need to add extra seats, right? So what you can do is to, I mean, a couple things in, in come to my mind. First one is you need to be ensure optimum speed of service, of course, without rushing her guests, right? So maybe you can add some kind of quick to prepare specials uh, during this period and also be sure that enough uh, uh, staffing that people uh, be served. So basically, we talk about this in the chapter video. If you serve uh, people something like quick preparing, like, <coughs> Sorry, some items could take like 15 20 minutes to prepare. I'm just making up these numbers, and let's say 15 minutes, and people takes about 15 minutes to eat, so it's like 30 minutes. But if you prepare something that's going to be very quickly done, like let's say five minutes, and if the people usually eat that in then 10 minutes, 10 minutes, so you total of 15 minutes, so you basically cut the, cut the uh, uh, preparation and eating time in half, and you can create some kind of uh, uh, the specials for those so people gonna eat and leave so the, you, you're gonna increase uh, uh, table turns in a sense okay so uh, thank you for listening